he comes, here he comes. There's the trumpets, there's the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy, here he Johnny Bolton was a subdued boy when Red Connors and I rode him back to Twin Rivers to answer charges of robbery and horse stealing. Mighty serious crimes for a 17-year-old. But we had all the evidence and young Johnny didn't even try to deny his guilt. In fact, he was almost proud of it and defiantly boasted that if he'd stolen a faster horse, we never would have caught him. And yet, despite his belligerent attitude, it was hard to feel anything more than pity for this youngster who rode between us. Age was in his favor, and I felt if given another chance, Johnny Bolton might still get started on the track to the right kind of living. As we rode into town, I could tell what the folks were thinking. Their repeated warnings that Johnny Bolton was headed for a life of crime had finally come true. And now they watched smugly as the boy came back to face his medicine. Ed Garver, the town's newspaper owner, was probably the happiest of all to see us ride in. It was his money and horse that young Johnny had stolen. Maybe Ed was a little disappointed, too, because he'd given Johnny his first chance, taken a homeless boy who'd been nothing but a scrapping troublemaker and provided him with a job and a place to live and back of the newspaper office. Howdy, Hoppy. Hi, Ed. Well, not so important now that the marshal's got you in tow, are you, Johnny? Did you get in trouble? Not at all. Hmm. Did you get all my money back? Yeah, I got it all. Come on inside. Ah, there's your money, Ed. Thanks, Hoppy. All right, Johnny, now what do you got to say for yourself? Come on, look at me. I ain't got nothing to say. Now, let me alone. Let you alone. I ought to put you across my knee and paddle your hide. But paddling is for kids. And you're a big man now, a real tough outlaw. And you're gonna have to pay the price for being one, Johnny. Throw him in jail, Hoppy. Ed, why don't you give the boy a chance to explain? Don't do me any favors, Cassidy. Go ahead, lock me up. Why did you do it, son? I took the money, you got it back. It's as simple as that. Looked like easy pickings. A lot of guys thought that. And the ever one wound up with a bullet in their hide. Not all of them, Red Top. Well, you whipper... Take it easy, Red. May I have a word with you, Marshal Cassidy? Oh, hello, Reverend Adams. I see you've already heard about Johnny. Yes, I thought maybe he could use someone on his side. No point in wasting your gospel on him, Reverend. He's too wild for the good book. Plato once said, of all wild animals, a boy is the most difficult to manage. Johnny's still a boy, Ed. And if I'm not wrong, a good one. Yeah, that's what I thought once. And look what happened. Yeah, and it'll happen again. Red, let the Reverend have his say. Thank you, Hoppy. Ed, I'd like to ask you a favor. All right, go ahead and ask it. Drop your charges against the boy. What? Turn this young thief loose to prey on all the rest of the honest folks in Twin Rivers? I'll be responsible for him, Ed. Besides, he can live with me. Would you like that, son? Did Plato also say any old port in a storm, preacher? First thing you're going to have to learn is some manners. What do you say, Ed? Well, I guess it'll be all right, but you're sure going to have your hands full. I think it'll work out all right. All right with you, Marshal? It's your responsibility. How about it, son? It suits me. Well, I ain't going to give him his job back. Well, he'll have plenty to do around my place. Come on, Johnny. Hey! Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean... Watch who you're bumping, rich boy. I didn't mean to do anything. Johnny! Johnny! Please! Stop it! Let him go, Reverend. Anybody can teach that boy some manners. It's Ralph Higgins. Reverend, wouldn't you hate to be that young again? <laughs> Come on, Ralph. Pound him good.
Johnny. Drop it. Let him fight, Cassidy. The fight's all over, so mind your own business. Why, you tin horse. Oh. You all right, Ralph? Sure, Mr. Cassidy. Johnny's not half as tough as he makes out. Why? That's enough, Johnny. No hard feelings, Johnny. Say hello to your dad when you see him. Sure will. Well, I thought you might get some sense pounded into you, but I guess I was wrong. The boy's got the devil in him, Hoppy. There's a little of the devil in all of us, Red. It's just a matter of keeping the old boy in his place. Come on, son. Red, you go back to the bar 20. I'm going to stay here in town and see if I can help the Reverend get Johnny settled. Yeah, well, that'll take a lot of doing. Uh, it's worth a try. Hoppy, someday that kid's going to get his hand on a gun. When he does, the devil in him will come out and there'll be nothing that'll save him. As hard as I tried, I couldn't be too optimistic about the Reverend's plan to help straighten out Johnny Bolton. Red was right. There was something inside of the youngster that kept pushing him to meanness. We only want to keep you out of trouble, Johnny. Real trouble that'll bring harm to a lot of people. Look, if I came here for a sermon, I'd just soon be in jail. Fighting the law never got a man any place. Oh, yeah? What about the sundown kid? He did okay. The sundown kid? What do you know about him? That happened 30 years ago. I read all about him in the back copies of the newspaper when I worked for old man Garver. And believed every word, I suppose, because it was on the printed page. Sure, why not? It's right there in black and white. The sundown kid outsmarted them all. He's doing all right now, too, living like a king somewhere. Newspapers can be wrong. Not about the sundown kid. I read every word, all about how he gunned down Rock Matson and everything. Nobody ever caught him. You're wrong, son. A man catches himself the minute he pulls that trigger to kill. The Reverend's right, Johnny. You can't get away from yourself. You can talk all you want. The sundown kid got away. And with all the dough a guy could use. Well, maybe you'll change your mind about a few things being here with the Reverend. I hope so. Don't count on it, Cassidy. <laughs> See you later. Well, Reverend, you cut yourself out quite a chore. Looks that way, Marshal. But the boy and I will get along fine. Just need a little time to get acquainted. Well, if anybody can straighten him out, you can. Good luck to you and keep in touch with me. Maybe I can help. Thank you, Holly. Johnny's knowledge of the sundown kid had come as quite a surprise. Of course, all the older folk in Twin Rivers remembered the kid. When he was about Johnny's age, he joined up with Matson, a feared gunslinger. But the kid wasn't used to taking orders. He and Matson settled their differences with a gun duel at sundown. Matson was killed and the kid came out with just an arm scar that he'd carry for life. From then on, every crime in the territory was attributed to the kid's fast gun. Johnny Bolton had gone way back to find an idol to pattern his life after. And I hoped that somewhere along the line, we'd find a way to stop him before a bullet did. Red and I were kept pretty busy at the Bar 20 for the next few days. Then we decided to ride into town and see how the Reverend and Johnny were getting along. gentlemen. How are you, Reverend? Fine, thank you. How's your boy doing? Oh, he's doing fine. What? Well, he's uh, still a little arrogant, but up until now, he's behaved himself very well indeed. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. As a matter of fact, 
I just sent them to the bank to deposit funds for the church building account. What? You gave that thief money? Certainly, Red. I thought it very important to show my trust in him. Well, that's just like giving raw meat to a lion, expecting him not to eat it. You'll never see that money again. Oh, slow down, Red. Why not just wait and see if he comes back? Well, I'm sure he will. You know, Red, if I were a betting man, you'd lose your saddle. <laughs> yeah. I hope I'm around to see him walk in with that deposit slip. How would you gentlemen like a nice glass of cold lemonade? Oh, that'd be fine. Hiya, kid. Hi. <laughs> I see the preacher's making a regular little errand boy out of you. What you see don't bother me none, mister. Oh, uh, now take it easy. No offense. I'm just surprised uh, you making these deposits for him, I mean. You mean this? Yeah. Listen, mister, I'm through with his chicken feed. Next time I make a strike, it's gonna be a big one. You, um, got anything special in mind? No, not just yet, but I will have. I'll keep you in mind if I need any help. Yeah, kid. You do that. Thank you. Well, well, wonders never cease. What's the matter with the red top? It looks like he was about to lose his teeth. <laughs> he was just about to lose his saddle. A little um, private joke, Johnny. Uh, everything go all right at the bank? Oh, yeah, fine. What are you doing, Marshal? Checking up on me? Uh, call it that if you like. We just dropped by to see how you and the Reverend are getting along. Oh, all right, I guess. Not much excitement around here, though. Excitement? Ain't you had excitement enough? A young man needs something to keep him busy, Red. It is a little dull around here, I must admit. Hey, wait a minute. I got an idea. Come here. How would you like to go out to the Bar 20 and spend a few days? <laughs> bar 20? It's a oh. fine idea, Red. What do you say, Johnny? Makes no difference to me. Well, let's get out there, then. What are we standing around here for? I cut a saddle pony from the corral and told Johnny if he wanted it, it was his. Johnny wasn't used to being given anything. For the first time, I'd penetrated his shell of toughness. And I felt sure that underneath the shell, there was still a boy of 17 with normal human 17-year-old emotions. He learned fast, and from what I could tell, he seemed to be enjoying himself. A couple of times, I even caught him smiling, and the smiles were sincere. <laughs> little by little, Johnny seemed to loosen up. He was a different person from the sullen, belligerent, roughneck Red and I had known just a few days before. <laughs> Here we go. But he still had his quiet moments. It was a puzzle trying to figure out just what he was thinking. It was like he was on a borderline. The slightest action could send him either side of the border. I just hoped when the time came, he'd be on the right side. By the time we rode back to the Reverends, even Red was more optimistic about Johnny's future. The few days on the ranch seemed to do the boy a world of good, and it looked as if the sundown kid was finally playing second fiddle to common sense. And my father's agreed to give you 10% of the profits. That's fine, Ralph. Hello, uh, Hoppy. Uh, come in, yeah. How are you, Reverend? <laughs> Greetings. Hello, Ralph. Good to see you, Johnny. Looks like the outdoor life has agreed with you. Ah, uh, we've had a lot of fun together. He's turned into a pretty good rider, too. Maybe we can go riding together sometime, huh, Johnny? Yeah, sure. You in town with your father, Ralph? No, I... Ralph's brought me some good news, Hoppy. It looks as if I'm going to have that church I've dreamed of for so long. Oh, that is good news. Ralph's father has sold a big herd of cattle, and he's donating 10% of the profits to my church building fund. That's bringing in the money tomorrow, Marshal, over $15,000. That's a lot of money to be carrying on a trail. Yeah, that's another reason Dad sent me in. He thought maybe you'd be kind enough to escort us. Well, I'd be glad to. Johnny, how about it? You want to come along? 
Yeah, I'd like to. Ralph, when I see your dad, I'll thank him personally. You don't know what this means to me and to Twin Rivers. And maybe when the church is built, Johnny will be in my first congregation. Yeah, maybe so, River. So if you're still interested, Ramsey, this is it. 15,000 split right down the middle. Mm, sounds like a fair deal, kid. But what, what are you afraid of? Nothing. I was just thinking, Cassidy's gonna be riding with him. And... Don't you worry none about Cassidy. I'll take care of him. It's a deal, kid. I thought it would be. Now, you be there tomorrow. The right place, the right time. Because I don't want any slip-ups. Sure, kid. Sure. That gun. Quick! You, hand me the money. What money? What are you talking about? I'm talking about $15,000. Now hand it over. my horse. Couldn't stop him. You all right? Yeah, I guess so. Kind of shaken up. I think I'll ride on into town. All right, but take it easy. I better get back to the Higgins. They're carrying a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, the Higgins were carrying a lot of money. But by the time I got back to the buckboard, the masked bandit had ridden off with every cent. It all seemed too pat. I figured Johnny was too good a rider to have a spooked horse run away with him. And when Red told me the bandit knew exactly how much money the Higgins were carrying, I had to agree that somewhere behind the robbery was the influence of the sundown kid. Telling the Higgins to meet us in town, Red and I rode out fast on the trail of Johnny Bolton. We tracked Johnny right back to Twin Rivers and spotted his horse in front of Carney's livery stable. Red recognized the other pony as the one used by the masked bandit, and our suspicions turned to harsh reality. When we heard what had happened, even the Reverend had to agree that the devil's idol within Johnny was stronger than any of us had imagined. The youngster was doing his best to be another sundown kid. 
Come on, we better get over there. There you are, kid. Two thousand bucks. What do you mean, two thousand? I said we'd split right down the middle. You'll take that or nothing, kid. Maybe you're forgetting. I can put the finger on you. I'm not forgetting a thing. If I go to jail, you go right along with me. You said Cassidy wouldn't catch on. I didn't think he would. Well, he tagged you right back to the barn. I knew I should never come back to town. What are we gonna do? Shoot our way out. Red, keep me covered. Come on, kid. We're getting out of here. Good work, Hoppy. All right, Red, take him to jail. All right, come on, get up, you. Hoppy, I think it's about time we kicked the props out from under the sundown kid. I was hoping you'd say that. Hold up. Come any further and I'll shoot. Throw me that satchel of money. Don't be a fool, Johnny. You'll never get away. The sundown kid got away. You're wrong, Johnny. The sundown kid didn't get away. What are you talking about? I can read. I read all the stories in the newspaper. Not the complete story. Sundown did kill Rock Matson in a gun duel, but it was self-defense. Later, he turned himself over to the law and was cleared of all charges. But the kid could never clear himself of the fact that he'd killed a man. He disappeared from the territory, but his reputation grew. From then on, every crime that was committed in the Southwest was falsely attributed to him. There's only one other man in Twin Rivers that knows the true story of the Sundown Kid. He entered the ministry and came back to Twin Rivers many years later as the Reverend Edward Adams. Yes, Johnny, I was the Sundown Kid. And I've carried this scar on my arm for over 30 years to remind me every day of how wrong I was to kill regardless of the circumstances. Johnny is not what a man is or was. It's what he can be that's important. I hope the rest of the town feels that way about it, Hoppy. I'm sure they will, Reverend about everything. Come on, son. Hi there, little partners. I think you know your mummy is the nicest and the most beautiful woman in the world and that she loves you very dearly. So when she asks you to do anything, don't fuss about it. Just do it. For instance, when she asks you to have a glass of milk, drink it. And then surprise her by asking for another one. You try that and see how much better you both feel. Now, until next week, so long. And in the meantime, watch yourself at the crosswalks, will you? There he goes on his way. Down the moonlit trail to where cowboys ray. Hop along, Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. He'll return soon again. There's no use to say goodbye.
goodbye until then.